So if we're looking at volumes of prisms, what did we say is a prism? Yes, Johnny. 3D. Okay, you said 3D, but this is a 3D shape. What shape is this? A cone. That is not a prism. Okay, that's not a prism. What about now? Don't judge my artistic, but oh, that's a not bad circle being drawn freehand. Thank you very much. Let's add a little bit of shading. Could have been an art teacher. That is a cool day. Sphere. That is also not a prism. So what is a prism? Flat sides, square faces. Yeah, yeah. I think you're getting there. You're getting there. A 3D rectangle definitely is a prism. So yes, that's a prism. This is a prism. Now, I got a NAPLAN question wrong, you know, a NAPLAN question wrong, because they say technically a cylinder is not a prism. Well, it's on video now, but I'm going to go. We might as well include it. Uh, technically, it says it has to have straight sides. But I like to go, for our purposes here, we're going to go with anything that has the same shape all the way to the bottom of the jar. Right? Same shape all the way through. And what happens with that, the volume is really easy because if you have the area at the top, all you have to do is times it by the height. What's another word for height? So when we're going 3D, D, depth. So, you know, if someone, the book says the depth is, it's the same as the height. We happy with that? So if we have the area we at the top, we just times it by the height and hey presto, ETH, we've got the volume. All good? So... Annabelle, you mentioned the 3D box. Well, we've got this shape here at the front, which is a rectangle. So we've got length times width, but then we have to times it by the, what do you want to call that? You could call it depth, you could call it height. You said depth first, so I'm going with depth. So we would say the volume is just length times width times depth. Does that make sense, Cooper? You good with that? Now, this is on your formula page that I've given you. On the, oh, he's even got it to the right spot. Now, you could write a formula for this if you wanted to. But, Ems, what shape do we see that's all the way to the bottom of the jar, all the way through? A triangle, that's right. So, for here, we would find the area of that triangle and then times by the... The, the Kung Fu, I'm not making those, yeah, Ooh, uh, the depth or the height, agreed? So again, if you really wanted to, you could say, well, this would be base times height divided by two and then times by the depth. But that's sort of, oh, do we really need that when you would just go, okay, look, I'll get the area of that triangle and just times by the height or the depth. We good with that? The one formula that I think we should have written down, is that for the volume of a cylinder. Now, without looking at your sheets, can we come up with the volume of a cylinder? Can we shut our laptop at the moment, please? What shape do we have at the top? A circle. So when we're trying to find the volume here, we just said it's the area at the top times the height or the depth. So what is the formula for area of a cycle? Ooh. No, 2 times pi times the radius is circumference and 2 times pi times the radius times height. That was surface area of the curvy bit. So just keep in mind, Coops, you're chatting. What is the formula for area of, or you were chatting, you were listening. What's the formula for area of a circle? So champion. So this up here is pi r squared. That's why we say let's take that area and times it by the? Height, so pi r squared times height, and that is your formula for volume of a cylinder. That's it. So I would say the only two formulas we really need is the box, length times width times depth, that I think most of us knew. Taylor, turn around behind you. Oof, that's a nice poster there. Somebody has great artistic skills, whoever made that. It was me. <laughs> All right. So they're there if you need it. You've got some extra ones on your formula sheet, which is also the cone and the sphere, but we don't have to do that um, at year nine, which is beyond me. But anyway, I think we should do it. But hey, are we happy with this? So 
if we think about some of the questions that we could get, they're very, very basic. Um, we have, okay, so we're wanting how many litres in a cubic metre? And some of the ways, I'm, uh, reasons I'm going through this is very often I like to say, please explain why there are this many litres in a cubic metre or in a square metre. So please, watch and learn. So everybody happy? One cubic metre is one metre times one metre times one metre. I'm going to convert this to centimetres cubed. How many centimetres in one metre? Yep, we all know that. I heard someone whisper it. A hundred. So this is actually one cubic metre is the same as one hundred centimetres times one hundred centimetres. Can't squeeze it in. I'm going to try. One hundred centimetres. What's a hundred times a hundred times a hundred? It's not three hundred. It's not a billion. Yep, count the zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that is one million centimetres cubed. Everybody happy with that? One million. And we just told you one centimetre cubed equals one millilitre. So that's 1,000 millilitres. And I would like to think with all the amount that you drink, how many mils in one litre? A thousand. That would be a very small bottle. So you guys know those bottles. Here's one right here. That's a bottle. How many? That'd be like 300 or 375. I can't tell. It's squashed. Okay. So that means we've got 1,000. So whoever said 1,000 litres without looking it up and guessing, well done. Those who said 100 litres, a little bit low. So handy things to be aware of because very often you go, where do we use this sort of stuff? Well, so we look. The first thing you have to read, the question. If it says surface area, Ollie, then we're going our surface area stuff. But this question is clearly saying find the volume of each of these shapes. This is the easy one. We look at our formula. It's length times width times depth or height, whatever you want to call it. Are we going to bother going, oh, is five the length or is that the width or is that the depth? Does it matter, Dees? It does not. So if you just want to go around and you go five times nine times 50, our job is done here. Off to the calculator. Are we writing this down, please? So we should have 9.05. I think this was question 5B. Do you have to draw the diagram? You do not. But if you want to learn how to draw these diagrams really quickly, here's, here's the deal. You draw the rectangle and then send it back parallel, parallel. This one has to be parallel here. There she blows. Parallel. Everything has to be parallel. No. So remember what we said, the rectangles, we take, you could take this face and times it, so length times width and times it by the depth. You could have taken the top one and times it by the depth. When do we divide by two? When we have a triangle. So we're about to do that one. Now when you did surface area, remember we were covering it, like wrapping the thing. Here we're filling it up. So what units are we going to put? It's not just centimetres. It's not centimetres squared. It is cubed. Beautiful. Done. Thirteenth. Once again, if you wanted to sketch this in your book, you draw this triangle and then you just parallel send it back. You are. Okay, so what are we going to do is this is the shape that goes all the way through. So Annabelle, we're up. We're going to say the volume is the area of that triangle times the depth. So how do we find the area of a triangle? Rhymes with base. Oh, I was going to say rhymes with face. Base. <laughs> base times height divided by 
2, and then we have to times by the depth. So do we know the base of our triangle there? Ollie, do we know the base of the triangle? What did you say? Yep, so what is it? So then look, what's the base of our triangle? Yeah. What is the vertical height? 3, we're dividing by 2, we're timesing by the depth, which is 7, and bang. So the only way we can stuff this up is if we're not looking carefully at the diagram. Do we agree? Pretty, pretty straightforward, I think. Now remember, you're going to get to some of these questions where you're doing one as a surface area. One is a surface area, one is a volume. So when we're doing surface area, we have to add a whole lot of bits together. So if you're doing one question and you're talking to your neighbour or you're looking at something on your screen and you're trying to avoid me looking at it, right, you're going to get mixed up. So you've really got to concentrate and make sure that we are on par here. Agreed? We looked. Metres, we go metres cubed. Who can give us the heads up about how we do... I can't tell if that's I or J. I reckon it's J. Is it I? You are correct. It is I. I, I, get it done. So, who can give us the suggestion, Zara dear, how are we going to get the volume of this one? Got to keep them separated. Boom, boom. Yeah. What do you mean by separate? I hope nobody actually listens to these videos when I'm singing. But anyway, carry on. Yeah. So you're going, you want to work out this area. If you can work out that area, then you can just times it by the depth. Correct? It's They've done a pretty nice job, I think, because... Oh, no, they haven't. That's one. What's that? Is it one? It looks like it's one, but have a closer look. Have a closer look because that's eight all the way across. So here's one, that's one, that's one, that's one, and that's one. So what would that length be? Yeah, it doesn't look like seven, but it is, isn't it? Sneaky, sneaky. So can you think of an easy way to work out the area of that, Johnny? Can you think of an easy way to work out this? Love you. Make it one big one and deduct the rest. So that's eight. I'm not drawing this very nicely, but we'll go again. Oh, <gasps> no. Undo. <laughs> I deleted it all. <laughs> oh, I think I'll just use their one there. If I take this, would you agree that's one by one? Yeah. That's also one by one, and that's another one by one. So even though it doesn't look like it, we can still see that it is. Agreed? So this funky shape, shh. The area is going to be 8 times 3 minus what? No. So you can, just, you can just write stuff down if you can't draw it. So what did we say? We've got 1 by 1 square here. We've got another 1 by 1. And we've got another 1 by 1 there. 3? Three? 3. So minus 3. 8 threes are 24. Okay. So we've got that, therefore, what will be my volume? M's. What did we say? Right from the get-go, the volume is just going to be... Promethean there! You see Promethean there? It's just going to be the area of the face times the depth. I feel like I'm doing Tai Chi. Depth. Right? So do I have... We've just worked out the area of this face is... 21. So we just have to times it by the depth, which I have written over. Was that tricky? This is nicer, I think, Ethan and Ollie, than surface area. Would you agree? 
Short, sharp, shiny. Surface area's got so many faces to it. This is, so we save the easiest bit till last. Are we happy with that? We help me now with this, but with Matt's space, there is an adaptive, a customized task that I have gone and made for you. So if you go to the tasks, you should be able to see, or if you go to Daymap, I've put a link there which will take you to, and you log in and you do. Now, I'm very much from the old school where you do the book work, then you do the revision after. They sort of go straight to, and you can get hints. So you have got two things to do. Ignore what I put on Daymap about, and I'll delete it in a minute, but ignore the questions from the worksheet unless you get stuck. Then you can go back and use those to help you. So you've got two things to do for the rest of this, well, possibly three. Number one, you want to check with me or with your neighbours about your assignment for surface area. Are there questions that you go, I do not know how to start or I got stuck on or I'm not sure about this? You're allowed to compare the pair. You're not copying off each other, that would be cheating. But you can help each other. Secondly, you will get onto Math Space and you will look at the task that has been assigned. Once again, I want you to do the working on your paper in your workbook and then you enter the answer on Math Space. We clear with that? Yes, um, and if you have finished all of that, if you finish the math space task, you can use the rest of that time to work on your assignment. I don't think that will be the case. Your homework is clearly your assignment. All right, you're handing up your assignment on Friday. I will mark it, give it back to you on, on Tuesday. And then we have to decide some time for revision and when we're going to do a test on this topic, which we should have finished last week. But we've had people away. Okay, so them's the runs.